Beauty of a large flat screen. So first of all, I want to uh, play a one minute, 47 second video that's on my website at usmarketing.bz. This is from Google and it really gets at the power of how ubiquitous Google has become. Most of you know this, but I'm gonna just ask you to look and see if you can spot the ad types in this one minute, 47 second video. It is very hard to hear the sound. Do we need the sound or is it all music? Yeah, how's that? Is that better? No. It's okay. It's all right. All right, so that is uh, something that we all know intuitively, but we sometimes overlook the fact that Google actually has 3.5 billion searches daily, 3.5 billion. And what many people don't realize, and we're gonna launch into the interactive part of this, is that if I'm on Google, and what you saw in that video were four different sets of ads. You actually saw a YouTube ad, you saw a Google e-commerce shopping ad, you saw a download gaming ad, and of course you saw what we're all familiar with, which are the text-based ads. So many of you are professional lead generation people. So I'm just on Google right now, and I'm gonna type into my browser a search for, I want a dentist near me. Very popular search, right? Now, what is my- Can you extend out that uh, window? Yeah, thanks. Yep, thank you for that. Sorry, I forgot. Many of you know that Google's smart, right? So my computer knows that I'm sitting here with an IP address in Northern Illinois. So when you enter near me, I'm on a desktop, but you may be on a mobile device. Here's what I want you to do. And you can do this on your own mobile devices while you're watching. Just go ahead and type in, not with your name, not with your exact city, but just your profession, in this case, a dentist. Now pay attention to this. There are three zeros, six zeros, that's a million. OMG, 1 billion, 210 million results in 0.73 seconds for dentists near me. Now, many people don't realize, and here's where we start to talk about how SEO, search engine optimization, which is the art and science of appearing on page one of Google without an ad, without an ad. Remember, 1.2 billion results. We see an ad at the top. We see the Google map listing with an ad. We'll talk about that in a bit. And then how many people actually know there's only 10 SEO results, 10 non-paid organic listings on page one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, I know not all of us studied statistics, but if you divide 10 into 1.2 billion, what is your chance of appearing for this search without an ad? I ask you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Google is sometimes criticized for, oh, they're this 80 billion, yeah, they are. But you can appear within a tight geographic region down to the zip code for an affordable daily budget. And here we have Northwestern Dental Group, okay? 
Here we have them with an ad. At the bottom, there's more ads. You could have up to four ads at the top, four ads at the bottom. This is a highly competitive area. So we'll talk about bidding and auctions in a minute. But here you have SBA Dental, best dentist near me. This is a small dentist. This is in Gurney, okay? And this is a well-composed ad with the exact location you could get on Google Maps and some site links. If I was on a mobile device, it would probably have the click to call button. So you can appear even in a highly competitive search with Google ads if you set up a Google ad program properly. Now, I'm gonna flip over to something else that I gotta just close this to show you the difference between I put this together a couple of years ago because I kept getting so many questions about what is the difference between SEO, paid search, and social. We're going to touch on all of these in the next 20 minutes. SEO, as we said, is not paid. And I have had, I see somebody's hand is up, just enter your question and uh, Steve will take care of it at the end. So SEO is the art and science of appearing on page one without a paid ad, okay? So sometimes the SEO people, God love you. It's a very difficult professional task. We need you absolutely. But sometimes they confuse the public by not exactly telling people that they may be running some ads too, okay? So SEO is very difficult to appear on page one for general searches of your product and services that do not include your name or location, which we just illustrated. Social media, which in its purest form does not have an ads, but also is just posts, okay? These are very important as well. And then paid is your paid ads, which are primarily on Google. Why? Because Google represents 78% of the search market. Some people do have Bing. Yes, some uh, computers come loaded with Bing, but Google is the undisputed 800 pound gorilla. Your sweet spot is in the middle. Unfortunately, not everybody can afford all three of these. So good SEO pro will charge you 500 to 1500 to $2,000 a month to write good content, backlinks, meta tags, titles, all the great content you can and should be doing to appear on Google. However, it's still going to be very difficult to appear for those general competitive searches, okay? This is where your paid ads come in. And of course, you can also have paid ads on social media, but that in its purest form is not posts. And Amazon is the undisputed leader for shopping. There's no question about that. And then we have Facebook. Facebook, of course, it's very popular as a social media platform and does allow advertising. But I would ask you this. If you're looking for a divorce attorney, if you're looking for a child therapist because your child is maybe autistic, sometimes you might not want all your friends and family knowing that on Facebook. Google has very good privacy controls. So these are how they play together. Now I'm going to talk briefly about how this works with Google Analytics. Okay. Now Google Analytics is your dashboard. Everybody here probably drives a car. If you don't have a dashboard to tell you how fast you're going and how much gas is left in the tank, what chance do you have of getting to your destination either without a ticket or taking a long trip? This is an analytics screen from a lead generation company that I work with. And I can make this a little bit bigger for you. This screen shows you the channels, direct entry, is somebody directly enters your website, okay? Uh, this is only a one week uh, look back. Social are your social media sites and posts. And if you click down on these, it will show what site it came from, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. Display media is often from remarketing and the Google display network, which are banner ads. Organic search is what we looked at, the stuff of SEO. Referrals from other websites and paid search. And if I look at this, just want to make sure I'm looking at, this is August 20th to 26th. And then you can actually track goals, 
which in this case is thank you page conversions. You can track average session duration, which is an indicator of interest, and you can track bounce rate. Now, we're not going to go into all of these because we don't have time, but you absolutely need a Google dashboard to show you what's going on in here, because without that, you have no chance of understanding what is going on on your website. And so it's critically important that you have that dashboard. Now for you e-commerce people, I'm gonna show you an e-commerce uh, dashboard, which is uh, amazing. And you can see, oh, sorry, I clicked on the wrong thing here. You can see that the uh, e-commerce dashboard for, sorry, where this particular company actually will report to you what dollars have been sold and what channels that it's coming from. And there's many different models of these dashboards. I'm not gonna go into all of the gory details of all of those models, but I will just say that you absolutely must have an e-commerce dashboard, which is Google Analytics and it's free. And you can get that at analytics.google.com and your web developer should also know how to get that for you. Now, the next thing that we saw on this highly competitive search, whether it's dentist for me, or we could say roofer near me, it's gonna be the same kind of a thing. You're gonna have ads at the top, ads at the bottom. In this case, we have 70,100,000 results. And we have this Google map. Now the Google map is the subject of what many of us hate. It's a robocall from unscrupulous marketing companies saying your map listing has not been verified. Now I'm gonna show you how you can do this yourself. It's free and I'm gonna open up an incognito browser and you just go to business.google.com. That's it, you type in business.google.com. And then you would enter into this browser what your business category is. It wants me to sign in, but it will give you a spot where you can enter, see, free, easy, personalized, and you enter your business listing. And if you're not listed, it will tell you. If you are listed, it will allow you to build out your Google Map listing. Now in the real world, not in an incognito browser, this looks like this. So I'm gonna show you another client of mine who sells Labradoodles, $3,500 Labradoodles. This is his Google map listing on the inside. Again, you just go to business.google.com. You list your hours. You're able to do posts. In his case of cute little Labradoodles, you're able to see insights, which is how many searches on your map listing, where customers came from. And you're actually even able to track calls that came in. So this is something that Google keeps changing and amending, and it's an amazing tool that's absolutely free at business.google.com. Finally, as I illustrated with uh, the dentist, and we can probably see it here with roofers near me too, these are the Google map listings. Many people say, well, Jim, how come I'm not one of these top three? Well, the reason for that is that these top three in this case has 56 reviews, seven years in business. Here's one with a, not as many reviews, but 10 years in business. And here's another one. What you post and the reviews that you get and how you manage your map listing will determine based on what people search, whether you appear in the top three. But notice there are also ads here. Now I am not in the Streamwood area, but this countryside roofing has connected their Google map listing through their Google ads interface. And now I'm gonna launch back over to Google ads and show you what that's all about and how it works on the inside. So with Google ads, when you have a, uh, I'll go to a professional lead gen situation. This is a, property management company in Phoenix. And this company, uh, and you don't have to spend this kind of money, but this company has in the last July 30th to August 26th, 
achieved an amazing conversion rate. This is just like a spreadsheet, right? We can tell you exactly how many clicks, how many times the ads have been shown, what the costs have been, and what the conversions have been. And you might ask, what's a conversion? In this case, it would be either a local action request for direction, or it will be a phone call, or it will be somebody typed something into their website and came out on a thank you page. And this is where we would directly set up with the business owner what your key performance indicators should be. This is the conversion area of Google Ads. So in this case, they want to track phone calls. They also want to track attract lead generation on lead submit forms. And we're tracking if they come out on a thank you page from the website. This is 100% accurate when the Google tags are installed correctly. And this is where your website and your Google Ads and your SEO all come together on what? Google Analytics. And finally, it's important to realize with Google Ads that you can set this up precisely down to the zip code level. So in the search campaign, Google will give you the ability to precisely pick when and where you want your ads to show up. In this particular case, the ads are just in the Phoenix area and we're blocking the Tucson area. And we can actually report back exactly where those clicks came from. We can't personally identify them, but we can uh, precisely report what was entered in Google within limitations and how many conversions this business got. So again, I want you to think about these four areas. We've covered SEO, we've covered Google Ads, we've covered the Google Map listing. We've talked about how difficult it is to be listed on page one from an SEO only standpoint without an ad for general searches. And I even misspelled it and look at that, Google corrected me. And uh, how difficult it is to appear on page one without an ad and how all three of these work together inside the wheel here that I've presented of digital marketing, SEO, paid search, and social. Just looking at my outline to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, shopping, we could talk briefly about that for you e-commerce people. Uh, so in Google Shopping, if we're on a new tab for Google and I am looking for uh, let's see, what am I looking for? I'm looking for fishing rods because the fishing season is coming up. So here we have Google fishing rods. Here we have Bass Pro, Dix, Cabela's, the usual suspects. What's this? Oh, Amazon? Yes, Google will take Amazon's money. Amazon spends millions of dollars of, on Google to direct people back to Amazon. And Amazon, of course, is the undisputed leader in shopping, but that doesn't mean that they're not also taking advantage of Google. And if you go to more on shopping or just the Google shopping area, now you can start to see smaller retailers that maybe didn't make it onto page one of shopping because they didn't bid high enough. So we have hot stuff for shop for fishing, uh, real fly rod and if i click on these they will be charged to click and it will go to the website where i could buy this particular item here's brian's farm and fleet so you know you can appear here and google shopping is now free of charge all right so we've covered google my business a little bit about analytics how seo and google ads work together and shopping i'm at 11 or 12 25 eastern Let's open it up to questions, which I think we should have 15 to 20 minutes for. Well, let's start with uh, an important question and uh, people seem to be asking about is like, what is the point where um, regular SEO is, is not getting you quite what you wanted and it's worth it uh, to move over to a paid search? Well, you would have to evaluate your business key performance indicators. If as most of you have logged on our lead gen, you should be able to see on analytics, let's see if I can find a better example of uh, an analytics uh, lead generation. Uh, you should be able to see on analytics 
how many leads are coming in. And if you're not able to see that, here's a, a dentist in Arlington, Virginia, and on analytics, we can see acquisition, all traffic, all channels. This is just gonna be one week. And we can see paid search, display, organic, and then we can see the make appointment goals. So there's been eight make appointment goals on paid search. There's been five on organic. The dentist might think five is good enough, but the paid search doubled his lead gen and appointments. Some of those people may have seen them anyway, but some of them might not. So your question is complex. Why is it complex? Because I work with clients all the time who say, wait a minute, how is my competitor showing at the top of the page? And I'm on page one, but I'm farther down because the competitor has an ad. I hope that answers that question. If not, I'll be happy to follow up afterwards with anybody. Okay, uh, Ramon is asking about geofencing. Sure. So as uh, illustrated inside the uh, Google campaign here for this client, but let me uh, have a smaller example. So we looked at that doodle, uh, Labradoodle seller. Uh, there are some very sophisticated things that we can do. Uh, I did forget to say that Google also owns that little thing called YouTube, which is the second most used search engine behind Google itself. And in terms of geofencing, Here's an example where we're blocking some downstate uh, areas and we have exact postal codes that the client knows have been good for him. We also have a seven mile radius around Arlington Heights. We also have a seven mile radius around Hoffman Estates. Why do we do this? We do these uh, concentric circles as well as other things because then what we can do in Google land is we can, like a stockbroker, actually do bid adjustments by locations. So if we know that this seven mile circle around Northbrook, Illinois is producing, we can bid up the ads there. We can also bid up ads up or down by exact day and time. That would be called day parting in broadcast. We can do it by devices, whether it's mobile or desktop, and we can overlay audiences that Google knows about. In this case, pet lovers and dog lovers. So it's not just geofencing, it's also audience overlays, device overlays, and exact bidding structures based on performance. So if you had a business that relied on you going to that establishment, this is a good strategy for you, to, something around where you, where you would find it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And that brings up a, a really good question, Steve. So here's one of the more successful ads. And this is a very sophisticated ad called a responsive search ad that allows up to 10 headlines and five descriptions. And Google will show us the most uh, successful combinations of those ads. And then if we click through any of those ads, we wind up at the client's website, which is beautifully constructed, easy to work with, has a chat box, has a phone number, and allows you to uh, quickly browse the dogs and contact the client. By the way, your website has to be fast. If your website takes more than three seconds to load on a mobile device that's not connected to Wi-Fi, more than three seconds, every second past three, you will lose 10% of visitors from all sources, from SEO, organic, direct, because it's like the Jeopardy song. Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 you know, the time they get to like four or five, they're out of there. So this is critical. Um, hope that answered that question. Yep. Uh, okay, Aaron asks, uh, Google ads are very similar to Facebook ads, yes? Uh, yes and no. So they are ads um, and Facebook ads can be targeted similarly with different audience and lifestyle overlays. Um, the Facebook ads have not been as much about um, e-com, but Facebook continues to get very sophisticated and they copy each other. So Bing, Facebook, they all copy each other. And I work in all these interfaces. So yes, they are very similar, 
But what's critical is that you set up your conversion actions, either in Facebook or Google, to track what you want. If calls are important to you, make sure you're tracking that. If um, filling out a form is important, make sure you're tracking that. I hope that answers that question. All right, nice. Uh, Jordan asks, if you're running Google ads and social media ads, do they run hand in hand or are they completely separate when it comes to analytics? So um, on the analytics side, we can see here for this particular client, uh, let's see if I can get to the, to the uh, Doodle client. Uh, sometimes they require me to, it's a different email address and that creates issues, but let's see if I can do it. Moving this little thing out of the way and should be able to do it here. Yeah, here's doodles. All right, so to answer that question, again, this is why it's so critical that you have Google Analytics. Here we have paid search, organic display, social. Now, if you're running ads on social, you have to look on your Facebook or LinkedIn uh, dashboard to see how the ad traffic worked. But on the social side with just posts, you can see how many users and what goals you've achieved from the social media sites. However, with the Google ads, um, that will be a separate thing from the SEO or organic search. And when you look at the paid search, you can actually see right down to the keywords, uh, what the users have been, their bounce rate, their average session duration, and so forth. I hope that answers that question. Follow-up question from Jordan. Uh, what do you find to be the best kinds of ads? Photos, videos, both? Uh, yes, the answer is yes. So Google allows uh, some very sophisticated ads. Let's see if I can show you another example from a uh, kitchen uh, renovation company in the Chicago area. So Google actually allows a responsive display ad that combines both text, so the image ads, text ads, and we can overlay a YouTube video. And because Google owns YouTube, if you embed a YouTube video on your website, that will help you from an SEO perspective. And then we can also run a companion YouTube campaign. So again, this comes down to being sophisticated enough to set up the ads properly, because while a picture speaks a thousand words, a video arguably speaks a million. And all these ads then go through to the website, hopefully on the right page where this client can get their lead generation for, as it says here, new quotes. I hope that answers that question. Yeah. So I have not worked in Google ads, but I have worked with Facebook ads before. And uh, I know that there's kind of an approval process. Like if you have too much text on an image, they might knock it out. That's correct. So uh, you wouldn't be able to put text overlays on your images. Uh, you can, however, add logos. So just to show you a peek behind the scenes of what happens in some of these ads, um, if I wanted to There we go. So if I wanted to uh, change up one of these ads, there is an approval process. And this is an example of the responsive search ad where you can have uh, up to 15 different headlines of 30 characters each, descriptions of 90 characters each. Google will actually give you an ad strength category. If you try to put images into certain ads, then uh, here's my pencil that I was looking for. Then you have to follow exact specifications and those specifications will be listed in the interface where you're trying to upload an image. And in this case, again, I gotta move the little uh, zoom thing out of the way. In this case, it gives you the exact specifications for landscape and for logo. And if you don't meet those specifications or if you put too much text in there, they will not be approved. I hope that answers that question. Good one. 
uh, Lori stole my question, which was, do you always need to be in an incognito window when using Google My Business? I noticed you jumped into that. I did that because I got 40 tabs open and Google knows me under three different emails and it just get my life gets complex. And I know Steve was very nervous about me doing this live. And so you know, I've been doing this 10 years and I have 10,000 hours of experience. So I've just learned to try and illustrate where you go cold for business.google.com. Um, no, you don't have to be in an incognito tab, but Google will quickly ask you to log in, which is where they start collecting all that data on you. My experience is that they're pretty harmless. They have pretty good privacy controls. Some people don't like it and that's fine. You know, you can block cookies and other stuff if you want, but yes, um, you don't need to be in an uh, incognito mode. I just did it because I knew it was going to automatically log me into my interface and wouldn't show you what I wanted to show you. Got it. All right. Um, Ken asks, would you know if ads on these platforms would work well for attracting new employees like Help Wanted? I don't recommend that. I've been down that road with recruitment, but the um, Steve named some of them um, that do the recruitment. They're advertising on TV all the time. Oh, it's, like, uh, yeah, in, Indeed or... Uh... Correct. And those guys, by the way, they're, guess where they're advertising? So let's go back to Google here and say, uh, looking for a trade job, okay? I'm just doing a Google search. Oh, what's this? An ad from Simply Hired, an ad from Zip Recruiter. <laughs> so just like Amazon advertises on Google, these guys do too. So they're spending millions of dollars. As a matter of fact, just for fun, I can show you uh, under my SEMrush uh, dashboard, if I entered Zip Recruiter, Dot com in domain overview, it's showing us that ZipRecruiter is spending $1.4 million a month on Google. Okay, so they're taking all the money from the people who are the employers who are looking from jobs and they're advertising a ton on Google. And here's their traffic cost. Oh, I misspoke, $5.2 million a month. And ZipRecruiter is advertising competitively by using their competitor Indeed as a keyword to launch their own ads, which is allowed on Google. So no, I don't recommend you do it. There's just too much freaking competition. You won't survive. Just sign up with one of these guys and call it a day. All right, uh, let's see. So uh, Jennifer says some upcoming changes. Uh, Facebook is changing how they do business pages. You used to need to get likes, but now you need to get followers. Also, third-party cookies are going to change soon in Google. Yes, that's true. So Google is going to audiences. They're taking away cookies. However, your first-party data, which is why it's so important that your website has what? I hope you've learned this. You can install the Google Tag Assistant for free on your Chrome browser. This is where you have your Google Analytics code and the global site tag. So even if you advertise just a little bit with Google, having these tags on your site will allow you to collect data anonymously. If you're really, really, really interested in how Google is going to do that, I will put the federated... Uh, Flock Federated Learning of Cohorts cartoon, which talks about how uh, Google does that anonymously in the future without cookies in the chat. Uh, so there you go. There's a link to Federated Learning of Cohorts in the chat. And you can learn more about that. I would just tell you this about Facebook, however. You are renting from a landlord on Facebook, right? They will direct it for the most part to your Facebook corporate page. And they'll try and keep you there so that what happens when you rent from a landlord for more than a few years, they raise the rent, okay? And that doesn't mean you're not gonna pay more with Google either for competitive ads, but at least you're directing the clicks to your website where you're collecting the data and the leads. Right. And, and a good website should have a sign up form. So you know, we could go back to the cute little doodle thing and, you know, they're going to have sign up forms and you should, too, so that you can start to collect that first party data. Stay connected. Sign up. 
All right, uh, Tasha's asking, uh, is SEM Rush the same as SpyFu? Very similar, but different. I use both SEM Rush, um, and then there's a Moz, Mozilla. So if you're really an SEO pro, you might have all of these. Sometimes SpyFu will show different uh, data for searches than SEM Rush. They're both good. I mean, I use them both. I have a higher level subscription to SEM Rush, but um, you know, they they have millions and millions of pieces of data that come into them. And sometimes if I can't find what I'm looking for in SEM Rush, I go to SpyFu. Uh, Anita is asking, how did you add the Google tab for analytics on your browser? Great, so you just go to wherever you get uh, your browser, uh, Chrome, you should use Chrome because it's a Google product. And you just go to your uh, browser, what is it, preferences or something. And then you uh, look for your uh, extensions. And if you can't find an extension, there's an extension store here somewhere. It's probably being blocked by this thing. Yeah, search extensions. And so uh, this is where you can find and enable. You might even be able to just search for it cold on Google. So if you want to Google uh, tag, assistant the tag manager is how you actually install codes but that can be complex there you go get google tag assistant here you go chrome google legacy tag assistant that's what you want the legacy version and i'm showing it right here and i'm already installed but if i wasn't it would say add to browser hope that answers that question all right um i think we are out of questions Oh, that's amazing. But See, now, Steve, you were worried. I told I you was, I could speak a thousand words a minute. <laughs> I was terrified. This is the first time in two years something like this where there's no PowerPoint. It's just let's trust the presenter. But Jim, <laughs> you uh, you have won me over. Uh, okay. So let's ask this question now. If people have questions and they're interested in working with you, how yes. to touch what the next so they just go to usmarketing.bz that's my website b like boy z like zebra usmarketing.bz and you can contact me here or you can pick up a free risk-free consultation i won't charge you and uh, that's usmarketing.bz and where is my what happened to my chat uh I don't know, it must be here somewhere. Anyway, it's US marketing dot be like boy Z like zebra. Oh, the chat's right here, it's sitting there in the middle. So that's the easiest way to get in touch with me. Uh, I have another, someone drew a question in and says, is retargeting worth it? Uh, yes, absolutely. And I'm prepared to show you why. So in a highly competitive kitchen renovation um, category, we can see here from this uh, particular client in a prestigious northern Chicago suburb that the clicks for text-based ads are six or three dollars and sixty-eight cents each, but the cost for remarketing or retargeting is twenty-two cents. And we can also see that the text-based ads cost eight eight ninety six eleven thousand impressions but the remarketing ad got a hundred and one thousand impressions for only 137 but you have to have enough people in there right in this case all visitors uh, this all visitor list uh, is big enough that we can show these beautiful ads to people um, over a thousand times which you saw before over 101,000 times for only $137. So yes, it's worth it, but it takes a few months to collect enough data to be eligible to do it on an anonymized basis. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, oh, Q&A again, let me say, uh, what are Google pixels and does that relate to SEO or Google Analytics? So some people talk about pixels as the tags that are put on a website, which with your tag assistant, you can see. So you once you have this tag assistant, watch this, this will blow your mind. So if I go to a huge retailer, target.com, 
And then I use my tag assistant to see how many tags are on this website that are tracking me. They have floodlight, the global site tag, the Google ads remarketing tag. And don't you think that if I'm not shopping for a calculator for my or backpack or whatever for my back to school person that they're not tracking my every move and I'm going to see this backpack the next time I go out on the internet. Yes. I'll follow you <laughs> until you buy it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. That's great. Uh, oh, all right. We got a couple more questions coming in. Okay. Let's keep going. Uh, let's see. Where are the Google ads being shown on the site? So uh, can you show an example of how uh, a person would see an ad? Sure. So we were doing that earlier with... Uh, you know, looking for a trade job, which I don't recommend you try and use Google for, looking for a roofer near me. Uh, how about looking for, uh, well, let's just put in CPA, right? There's a lot of good certified accountants, CPA near me. And so we'll put in that search and we've got 390 million results in less than one second. We've got two ads at the top. So the ads will be at the top of the page, up to four of them. And then there can also be up to four ads at the bottom of the page. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, let's see. Ooh, what else do we have? Uh, do you have any books that you recommend? Uh, for what, for what? For anything <laughs> personal self-improvement, spiritual. <laughs> anything related to uh, that. Uh, all right. So I'm a very experiential learner. I can tell you that um, it does, you can, you can do it theoretically, but it's never the same in the real world. Be like studying an accounting book. You got to practice. So yeah, I mean, there's bunches of books out there, but honestly, the Google help menus are killer. So if you're in Google, there's this little, you establish your Google ad and you click on help and it says new features. And you say something like, um, how do I write an ad and you hit enter and now you've got write successful ads and it gives you all these beautiful things about how you can do it and more links so honestly just get started you know you can read to your blue in the face it's not going to be like the experience of actually doing it yeah you know the, I, I i'm a, a book person give me a book and i'm fine but the thing with something like Google, uh, they're always changing their algorithm and things like that. So you may buy a book and it may be already out of date by the time it gets published. It's no question. And as a matter of fact, the only thing I'm surprised about is that while I've been showing you around on my client center, that I didn't get the little red sign that says the engineers have changed the interface because they do it 10 times a week. So yeah. honestly, just get started. If you need help, find somebody that's good to help you who knows what they're doing, but there's over a thousand menus in here. So I'm not trying to say you can't do it yourself. All I'm saying to you is that there's this thing called columns here, modify columns, and every one of these columns has dozens of different columns that you can add and there are simple ways to do google but i do not recommend the google smart ads i actually have a podcast on that um it's not good because you can't see the granularity of detail that you need to see to do a good job and google will take your money which they're good at doing and i'm a google partner and you know but they're a business so there you go <laughs> all right so back to the ads that you were showing um, Jordan's asking about what about the ones that have photos and videos, where do they appear? So uh, those ads will appear uh, depending on what you're Googling and what kind of a device you're on. So if I'm looking for, let's say I'm looking for uh, a how to, because sometimes this is good, how to repair shingles. Okay. I've actually done this on YouTube and I learned a lot. So I put in how to repair shingles, and then I got these ads at the top, which are the service ads. Now you have a uh, YouTube video ads. So then you say, oh, this looks good. Let me go over here. So now I'm in YouTube and I'm looking at this ad, but I wanna look at some other things in YouTube. I think that was the video I saw. So then I'm looking for uh, 
roof repair in YouTube. Now we can see some ads will start to appear here. And then sometimes those videos will appear before the start. Like those are the ones you can pause before. And sometimes you can actually see them on Google search too, which, you know, I wish I could trigger everything I wanted exactly when I want it, but um, you will see them in different formats and Google will warn you, depending on the device, the search, um, when and where you are, they'll show you different ad formats. I just went through that with a client this morning. So uh, let's see if I can think of one. Um, buy a cat. Let's see. So, okay, here's some shopping ads for buy a cat. Wayfair is in paying Google a lot of money. One fast cat, great big canvas and meow premium cat cave. Um, these, the videos won't necessarily appear over here. Uh, certainly I've seen them on page one, but I'm sorry, I can't trigger it for you right now. Here's some ads at the bottom. So yes, they will sometimes appear on page one, but I don't know how to exactly trigger them to show you. Okay. Uh, all right, I think, well, let me just jump to the chat one last time to make sure. Uh, yeah, that's good. All right. Oh, here's one uh, from Roz. Uh, do you see higher conversion rates with landing pages like ClickFunnels versus just going to the homepage? That's a great question. So uh, the landing pages can convert very well for services that you just want a fast response from and the funnels can be good. So I've worked with B2B clients that do this where they have a landing page with some basic descriptions and then the form is right there and it says, I'm interested in check these and make sure you just ask for an email address, not too much detailed information, don't require a phone number, they won't give it to you. That said, I will also tell you that we can land Google ads anywhere on a website. So we don't have to land them on the homepage. So if we are like putting up an ad for adoption, we're gonna land them on this adoption page, okay? Where there's a nice link for reserve today. 